Hello all, welcome to this session. In this session, I am going to answer one of the Selenium interview questions. That is, what is the use of properties file in Selenium automation projects? Let me answer. So what is the use or purpose of creating this properties file? First, you have to understand that. For that, I'll explain something for you. Let's say you have created some automation scripts. Okay, let's say each and every box I am drawing here is an automation script, assume that. Okay, there are a lot of automation scripts you have created as part of the project. In real time, you'll have many more boxes. Each and every box represents an automation script in this example. Okay, now in this automation script, you have hard-coded the URL. You have manually written the URL like HTTP colon double slash some XYZ dot com like that. Okay, and uh, the URL is also written here. The same URL is written here, written here, written here. Okay. Is provided here, provided here. In every automation script, the same URL is provided. Suddenly, the client came and gave you another URL. Okay. So, same application, but a different URL the client gave. And this is the latest URL. This is the old one now. Now, what you have to do is since the client has given you the latest URL, you have to update the old URL in this automation script. This, this is a code. Okay. Automation code here. Okay. This URL got, uh, we got the latest URL. So, as an automation engineer, once you get this latest uh, URL, you have to go and update the URL in the script. Okay. Here also you have to update the URL. Here also you have to update with the latest URL, latest, latest, latest. Okay. Again, tomorrow client will come and give you one more latest URL. Again, you have to go here and update, 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 update. Okay. Here we can see only uh, less number of boxes, but in real time, you'll have a lot of automation scripts. In each and every automation script, you have to go manually and update the URL. That is a headache, maintenance headache there is. Okay, not only you are other type of data like, you know, locators, test data, like username, password. Okay, if they get changed, you have to go to the individual automation scripts and update the URL, uh, update the URL or uh, username, password or locator details here. Okay, so we are, without uh, without the properties file, we are hard coding the test data and configurations in, in this individual automation scripts. Rather, what we can do is, Instead of uh, having this maintenance headache and all, what we can do is we can create a centralized file. This file is known as properties file. Okay. So we can create a centralized file known as properties file. Properties file. And uh, what you will do here is uh, in this properties file. Okay. So in this properties file, whatever the URL is there, you will provide here. Okay. Whatever the username password is there, you will provide here. Whatever the locators are there, you will provide here. And all these individual automation scripts are going to access this uh, URL or this uh, test data or located, uh, located details from this centralized file. So tomorrow, if the URL changes, do you have to go to individual automation scripts and update? Once the properties file is in place, you don't have to go to the individual automation scripts and update the URL. Rather, simply come to the properties file where only one place this properties in this properties file the URL is provided. Update the URL at one place, and all these automation scripts are going to access this URL from this centralized location. Similar thing with the username, password kind of test data or any other type of test data, and uh, similar with the locators. You don't have to go to the individual automation scripts. Rather, simply provide it here. Okay, uh, simply centralize this hard coded data into this uh, properties file, and uh, if they change. Okay, only in single place we are going to update in the properties file and all the automation scripts are going to access them from here. You don't have to go to the individual automation scripts and update if you have the properties file and where the test data configurations and the locator type of things are centralized. Okay, hope you got the idea why we need properties file in Selenium automation projects. This is what you have to explain. Okay, if you get this kind of question in the interview, you have to explain this thing. Okay, whatever I explained here, you have to explain that's the main thing. Okay, so in properties file, we can store test data. We can store environment environment uh, configurations. Test data is something like username, password, like that. Okay, environment configurations like browser name, browser version, operating system name, whatever it may be. Okay, such kind of environment uh, configurations in which you want to run the automation scripts on or the test data that, that is required for that particular automation script. Like uh, when you are creating an account, you need first name, last name, like that. Okay, all the test data you can store also. So you are not just storing, you are centralizing it. Okay. You are picking all this uh, test data and environment configurations from the individual automation scripts and centralizing in the single properties file. Okay. So uh, with the help of centralizing, right, we are removing the hard coding of the test data and configurations in this individual automation scripts. We don't have to hard code anymore. Okay. This data, we don't have to hard code anymore. If you hard code, what happens? If something changes, you have to come to the individual automation scripts and update. That's a hectic process or 
time maintenance thing. Okay. So remove the removing the hard coding of the test data. Okay. So this is called as hard coding. If you are providing the URL directly in the automation scripts, or if you're providing the actual username password in data in the automation scripts, that is called as hard coding of the data and or configurations. We should rather remove the hard coding and centralize them in the properties file. Okay. That is a use of the properties file. So if anything changes, do you have to go to the automation uh, script and uh, do any changes? No, simply go to the properties file and update the things here. You don't have to touch any code here. Okay. No need of doing or touching the code or doing any code changes to the code when this test data or environment configuration or locators changes. Okay. Because now this, once you move this uh, test data, once you centralize this test data environment configurations or locators uh, into the properties file, hard coding is not there. Hence, you don't have to touch any individual automation script or code. Rather, you can simply go to the properties file where the centralized data is there and update that in a single location. Okay. So we can also store locators apart from the test data, environment configurations like, you know, uh, browsers, operating system, versions, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. You can also store the locators. Okay. To locate the elements on the web pages, we create locators, right? Tomorrow, these locators may change on the application. So instead of uh, touching this co uh, code and uh, of the individual automation scripts, we are going to the properties file and update the locators there. Okay. Fine. If they change. So these three items, test data, environment configurations, and locators can be stored into the properties file. They can be centralized into the properties file. Okay. So, but in my, Okay, in my view, where exactly have used the properties file, okay, in real time, okay, with my knowledge and all, where I have used the properties file. Though you can store test data, environment configurations and locators into the properties file, okay. So in, in my real time automation framework that I have created here, you, I can show you where I created the properties file. For example, here, config.properties, under the config package, I created the config.properties file. So here I created this properties file to store the basic configuration, not all configuration, basic configurations. Okay. Like a uh, URL of the application tomorrow, this URL may change. I don't have to touch the individual automation scripts here. Rather I can update the URL latest URL here, browser name. I can come and update the browser name here. Okay. Valid email address. I can come and update the valid email, uh, email address here. If it changes tomorrow, password also I can come in basic configurations and basic test data. I'm storing into the config dot properties file. And also somewhere here, test data dot properties file also created for each and every uh, kind of functionality. What test data is required? I stored here invalid password, email password not matching warning, uh, first name. This is all test data. Okay, whatever the test data that is required for the automation scripts, I have created in this test data dot properties file. Okay, basic configurations I created in the config dot properties file, whereas um, test data that is required for automation scripts I created here. Similarly, you can create the properties file for storing the locators of the Okay, functionalities of the application. Okay, you can also create the properties files to store the functionalities of the application. So, hope guys, you understood uh, what is the use of properties file in Selenium automation projects. So, that's all for this session. Thank you. Bye bye.